All right, something I want to riff on right now, the art of vulnerability, as well as the vulnerability of art. One of my most uh, important lessons I've learned multiple times uh, in creative outlets and other things is that what makes great art, what makes somebody a great performer, is vulnerability. Great art comes from this place where people are being, uh, are taking risks, are opening up and sharing parts of themselves that are counterintuitive to this image of, that we typically try and project of being like confident and strong and capable. You know, we're instead opening up about the things we worry about, the things we're insecure about. Uh, and that works really well as art because that's how we connect to each other as human beings, you know? We are impressed with each other's feats, but we are, we, we soften, we open up to each other because of our fragility. Now all that said, I think great art, like the best, comes when people are vulnerable and get right up to this point where they're being as vulnerable as they can without crossing the line of where it turns into uh, just being self-destructive and harmful to yourself and possibly other people. And you know what, the more you practice some creative outlet or the more you just observe as an audience member, the more you realize that line is like paper thin and sometimes kind of fuzzy. You know, where does vulnerability end and oversharing begin? Or, or in other word, trauma dumping, you know? When is it just, when is it something that's really authentic and heartfelt and that makes you uh, open up, you know, as an audience member, you're opening up and getting more in touch with your humanity versus something where a person just seems to be airing their, their grievances for catharsis. You know, one of the more recent times I realized the connection between vulnerability and art was uh, through improv, of course, that's where like so many of my creative lessons come from these days. But yeah, a teacher just pointed out that a great performer is a vulnerable performer, so even in something as ridiculous as improv tends to be, you hit a sweet spot when you feel like you're you're pulling something that's actually from the real world onto stage and, and riffing on that for a bit. Something about emotions or relationship, things that are actually the foundation of a good improv scene. Yeah, that got me thinking, like, yeah, this this applies everywhere, right? This isn't just improv, but like great musicians put their heart into their music. You have those authors who write books that are like totally beautiful, but also kind of soul crushing and devastating at points. On the other end of the spectrum, you have like stand-up comedians who are killing it, but then you're also listening and you're like, did you mean to tell us all this? This is this is not painting you in the most favorable light. You know, it's funny, like figuring out where that line is between trauma dumping and vulnerability is a really messy process. And I actually don't think you learn it until you've messed up a few times, you know? If you think of any author, any musician, any creative, whatever, who you think just does a great job with this, with vulnerability and yeah, making stuff from the heart, uh, you can probably be pretty confident that at several points they, they develop that by going a little too far with it, you know? By, by oversharing, which I know is like the cringe thing, like, oh, you're putting too much of yourself out there in the world. Uh, but that's, you know, I can't think of any examples where a great artist developed their sensibility for what to keep personal and what to make public by holding back. You know, no one uh, takes the conservative approach to learning how to work with that line. You learn by making a mistake because essentially vulnerability is risk taking. The issue with trauma dumping, aside from making your audience uncomfortable, which is not the worst thing in the world. A lot of great art is designed to make people f put them in a state of discomfort. But the part where trauma dumping gets uncomfortable and perhaps seems to appeal less uh, from an artistic standpoint is when you feel like it's just a self-serving performance. You know, like if it's an act that's really just for the sake of catharsis, like somebody uh, is bringing stuff on stage that they should have brought to the therapist's office instead, uh, and rather than connecting with it, you kind of feel like you're um, just being a voyeur into something you shouldn't be. And for an audience, it's awkward, but for the artist or the performer or the creative, Doing too much of this could sabotage your own healing journey. 
A weird analogy I like to think of is, you know, in sports and basketball, there are times where an an athlete will kind of sacrifice his body in order to make a play, you know, uh, really just throw themselves into the stands to make a catch. And in the moment, that's good. And if the stakes merit that, then it can be worth it. But if you do that too much, if you do that in an at an inappropriate time, or if you just do that uh, too often, in a long-term way, you're putting your body through something that's going to be worse for your athletic career in the long run. You'll get yourself injured, some that you might not recover from the same way. So here are just a few things I've learned about how to make vulnerable art without uh, falling into this trap of trauma dumping. First of all, keep making stuff for somebody else. You know, uh, being vulnerable, of course, is like this exploration of your own soul. You're diving deep into your own inner life and that's great and that's rich. But if you continue to keep in mind, in sight, that you are making this for somebody else, maybe somebody who's at that point that you were in your journey a while ago, maybe somebody who seems to be going down the same path you were, somebody who could relate to the situation, somebody you wish could understand. Trying to make that connection keeps this from being simply an egocentric performance, right? Because then it's no longer just about you, which is one of the traps of trauma dumping. Yeah, I honestly believe that art is never just for you or just for your audience. Like it's always gonna be for a bit of both. But I think when the work feels especially personal, that's also a really good time to check in and see how does this connect with other people. There's this expression, I hear it a lot uh, and I think it, it gets repeated a lot because it's so useful. Create from your scars and not from your wounds. In other words, yes, our traumatic experiences, our pains, our insecurities are great places to make art from, uh, but time plays a big role in whether or not that's gonna be a good idea. When you're creating from the state of being unsettled, from being off balance, uh, it just lands differently. And you don't have the perspective that uh, being a little bit more removed brings. And that perspective adds depth and dimension to your, your storytelling, your art, rather than just a cry of misery. Not that there aren't really artistic cries of misery out there. There are, but you get what I'm, where I'm going. And then this is probably something we all know deep down, but it's worth mentioning. Think through the risk of fallout, you know? Um, of course, there are times when like something happened to you and other people uh, bear the culpability there and it's totally up to you to, to name what happened to you if that, that's your truth and if speaking your truth is what's right. But that's not always the scenario. There are times where you might not, you know, you have a more complicated relationship with somebody, somebody who means a lot to you but who is also very close to you and you step on each other's toes and you don't want to share something that just feels like an unresolved argument, something that could be said to the person, could be worked out. Uh, it's better not done, like, again, on stage. And of course, when it's, it is the scenario, when it's not black and white, like, somebody wronged me and it's my story to tell, I'm coming out with my truth. When it's not that scenario, be really mindful of whose, whose story is it to share. Yes, you have your side, but, you know, just, just the respectful thing. It's actually, it's actually in many cases helpful to remember the other person is likely responding to traumatic experiences of their own and, and this is yeah it's always a cycle isn't it the funny thing about all these rules i just laid out is i don't really see them as rules i'm not a hardliner on any of them like i started out the best way to learn the 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 balance between uh vulnerability and just discretion is to practice and in other words, you're going to mess that up a few times and that's how you learn. But the more you do this, the better you get at it. Now, I also say this with a caveat that you can probably think of a whole bunch ex of exceptions to what I just laid out. Times where someone created from their wound, not their scar, and the album turned out just incredible. I don't know, that happens sometimes. But I'm not just looking out for your creative performances. I want to think about your personal well-being too. You know, and so this, uh, this little, these tips, are, uh, have both in mind. As you practice, as you make those mistakes, as you figure out where this line is for you, you start to develop your footing, you start to find your voice and all that, and the result is really great. You know, uh, I have probably, I'm confident I've erred on the side of oversharing in the past, and I'm not immune to it these days, 
I've also erred on the side of holding too much back. These days though, just from having done it from such a long time, I feel a greater sense of confidence about what's in a state for me to talk about publicly, to put into art, what's not, when to hold back, when to push myself into a greater state of vulnerability. And the only way you learn that is through experience. And so, above all, I just encourage, go get that experience. All right, thanks for listening. I uh, hope this was helpful. Some of it was uh, applicable. And I will see you soon.